Well, welcome everybody and good morning. Uh, for me, it's good afternoon. I'm recording this um, Wednesday evening and I apologize first for not being able to be with you. Um, I look like some aging hip-hop artist, which I am not, as you know. My name's Pat Dolan. I know most of the room, but not all of it. And for the folks from Hillsboro, for instance, I uh, want to welcome you. Um, what role I've played through these Great Lake uh, Turn meetings is one of, in some senses, a curriculum glue, kind of the dean, who tries to make at least some comment that gives us some continuity from meeting to meeting and throughout the meeting itself. So I want to take a, a minute or two to look at the curriculum that we've gathered together. This piece is an ongoing dialogue that I've had with this group and several others around the changing structure and function of public education in the last few years because it is in some senses affecting all of us, but particularly the teachers unions at, it, at their core. And that's of enormous importance to us and in some senses the reason we exist. I think Mary and, and um, myself, as we work with uh, all sorts of people across the country, um, we, we're basically uh, trying to provide a place that's safe, open, thoughtful, honest about what's coming at us, uh, what our role ought to be, but a safe place to think about and gather the very best minds in the country around such things as teacher evaluation and so forth so that we have a place to think this thing through before it is imposed in various ways and, and in a punitive fashion. I'd say in general that's what at least brought us here. So here we go chosen one more time to use teacher evaluation as our primary weave. And the reason is twofold. Number one, uh, that piece is moving very, very quickly. We know it came out of uh, Race to the Top. We know that it is hooked to the SIG grants, which is a very strange place to hook your first wave of critical kinds of revamping of the profession when you know you are going to do that under enormous duress with new leadership. Uh, in some of the toughest schools in the country to, in some senses, uh, gather momentum. Uh, but that's de facto where our first wave will be, and we are almost a year into it in some cases with the second and third wave right behind it. So it's important to pay attention to it. But second, it's important because of the way it was framed five or six years ago, in some senses punitively, as a search for bad teachers and a sorting mechanism for bad teachers. Um, and the reason we think it's the wrong frame is that this represents an enormous ability for us as professionals to gather uh, ourselves and think about whether this is a chance to define uh, out of our own practice and out of good research what we think and believe are deep, wonderful practices, best practices in the profession and build those into an ongoing learning climate across the country. That is a very different frame than the narrowest sense of teacher evaluation. From outside, we, this is the second time here we've asked VARC uh, from Madison to come with us. And the reason is that we think they are, first of all, people who know what they're doing with respect to value-added uh, measurements. But secondly, we find them very interested in the voice of the union and the teacher in the design and the learning. And uh, so they make a wonderful companion for us to listen, to learn, and to hear, in some senses, the research voice. Second, we've reached in and asked Hillsborough County, for those of us in the upper Midwest uh, with a very, very narrow view of the world, you're going to be surprised by Hillsborough County, not only for what it is they've done, but in some senses who they are. Uh, this is one of the largest districts in the United States. Last time I looked, something close to 200,000 children, all right, and about eighth largest in the country. That is, uh, that's going to come, become a surprise to almost everyone in the room except them, all right. Uh, number two, an enormous continuity of leadership that most of us have not been able to uh, count on at all. I believe four superintendents since 1968, if my memory serves me correctly. And that has allowed not only that continuity on the administrative side, but enormous growth from within. Almost every one of the administrators and the union leadership have been teachers for 20 and 30 years inside Hillsboro, which gives almost everyone on the union and the management side a deep understanding of the common culture. 
And it's off of that kind of homegrown leadership that they have built uh, it's some of the most wonderful examples of not just a collaborative culture, but moving very strongly into this area in the broadest sense of teacher evaluation, but in the broadest sense of using all sorts of multiple measures to build a professional learning community for all of their teachers in an ongoing fashion, and to build professional development teams and plans off of that. Uh, the bridge, of course, is that they've used VARC as uh, their value-added um, consultants. So it gives us a deep kind of weave here in, in that sense. Started three, four years ago, really, uh, together, was to figure out what it was that was really being talked about when someone opened up uh, this issue of teacher evaluation. And by that, I simply mean that we understand, all right? Sometimes it's hard for us to admit but in some senses, for the last 50 years, if there was any evaluation going on at all, it was basically based on a combination of some fairly thin gruel the first two, three, or four years, and then mostly input of questionable kinds from teacher-led un teacher universities, if you will, but teacher training institutions, and seniority. All right, so a gathering of hours and a gathering of process input plus years of service as the single movement through what is typically at the end of all of our appendices of our contracts, uh, some sort of scale, pay scale. And without much data at all, that any of that had much to do with excellence in teaching. What's happened overnight is in some senses an opening of this, and as a matter of fact, an attack, if you will, questioning almost all of this and moving very fast again, without much data, to say we basically want to judge all teacher evaluation or place it in the hands of a very, a very, very uh, crude kind of output. And, of course, the first piece of that is it comes as some sort of summative measures all right, of some sort of um, national or state-led testing. And early on, the debate was primarily in legislatures uh, running for the RTT, basically saying, well, maybe we'll at least make 50% of the teacher evaluation uh, some sort of uh, output, in quotes, of scores of children and so forth. Meanwhile, uh, we have, in the last three or four years, built some sort of beginning kind of combination of, a, of multiple measures all right, that basically will take into account some sort of perhaps value-added uh, approach to children's growth and development, uh, hence the Bark and the Hillsborough piece. Right. We also will talk about ongoing in the next two days various people experimenting with service, with national board certification, with other kinds of input that you would be basically well founded in terms of the research. And then there are several models, as we all know, of the teaching and learning process that we consider best practice, and the one that we've typically used here in the Great Lakes is the Charlotte Danielson's model. What we're going to do early today is to try to enrich that one in a very interesting way, we think, by adding to basically the Charlotte Danielson model of good teaching, to add to it in some sense as a second layer Right, based on a wonderful project that is well in, in, in its development called the Tripod Project out of Harvard and the Harvard Ed School. Uh, we've got a wonderful representative here that basically is going to lead us through that tripod data, which is really student data all right, and student perception of good teaching. And then we are going to basically look at possibilities of enriching, if you will, the Charlotte Danielson model with some of the early research that's coming out of the tripod data to see if we get an even more interesting kind of layering of what I would call the process to add to output, which we will have Bart doing presentations on and then looking at Hillsborough as a deep case study or two. All right? And we will continue to ask questions here around whether other folks are beginning to experiment with other input as well. All right. That's probably the crudest form uh, our simple model of in, in keeping the thing open, if you will. Uh, we also have some wonderful panels in which we understand that the state, the locals, 
but particularly the, uh, the two national unions and the, the uh, Department of Education have, if you will, official views of multiple measures and so forth. And then general the role of teacher uh, evaluation and the role of any kind of output of student data. And that's appropriate. It's appropriate that the National Federation and the EEA have roles that, that are different than the state. We will have on our panel, all right, EA representation that has one kind of position here for national policy reasons. And at the same time, we will, we will have representation in Illinois of both the EA and the Federation who came together to, in some senses, move way out with respect to this issue, mainly because they were under joint attack. And in some senses, not that they broke ranks with either one of their national, but that they had to come to terms with their own specific local conditions, and they had to do it very quickly and under enormous duress. And then we have, as we always have, if we can, uh, the luck of having Joe Anderson, who represents, in some senses, another official position, uh, which we value enormously, which is the Department of Education. And within all of that, of course, we are coming up on the 10-year anniversary of No Child Left Behind which in some senses changed the scenario forever. It is finally now, as you know, being uh, rewritten, and there's a possibility that it will come out of committee um, for debate in the House and so forth before the uh, end of the year. Uh, there are all sorts of issues uh, in No Child Left Behind that are on the table uh, and basically being devoted, debated, and all of the, the national groups will have positions with respect to it, but we thought it was very important for us to hear from very wonderful actors, if you will, uh, representing those, those organizations. And uh, you'll be very happy, I think, with, with that representation as well. I apologize, because of all the things I was looking forward to doing, uh, it was, in some senses, um, trying to stir that pot uh, as the moderator uh, Friday morning. Uh, if somehow a, a half miracle happens tomorrow in the hospital, I promise I will be there at least to uh, observe and, uh, and so forth. There's another reason I wanted to be here Thursday and Friday, and because on that panel is a wonderful leader whom we are going to fet a little bit with a little celebration Thursday evening, and, and that's uh, Fran Lawrence. Fran Lawrence is now on the executive committee of the Federation nationally, but most of us know her for 30 plus years as a wonderful leader out of Toledo with a certain kind of wonderful mind, a certain gentleness and thoughtfulness, and a certain toughness, all of which I have learned over many years to respect. And uh, it's wonderful to have her as part of this. And we were going to use uh, this occasion to uh, celebrate a bit her leadership. Now that's, a, that's an attempt to, um, in 10 or 15 minutes, to talk a little bit about the curriculum. The curriculum in the sense of creating a safe, deep place to have hard conversations. Um, these are the places we need to learn from one another, to learn from best practice, and to learn from, in some senses, the pushing of each other. Um, there are places where open secrets in organizations are always talked about outside, but can't, for all sorts of good reasons, be spoken of in official uh, places. Uh, Turn is not supposed to be an official place. Turn is a place where locals and state affiliates, when they're interested, have leadership at all levels, uh, staff of both the, uh, the Federation and the EA, uh, have a chance to talk more openly about what's actually happening to us in the trenches and what we're learning, what kind of pressures we're under, and how we're beginning to help each other move in the right direction. So good luck uh, today and tomorrow. Um, my best wishes and my apologies. and. Um, Godspeed on this.